Hey everyone, this is Brian from FPV Racing Hobbies. Today we're here to do an unboxing of the Arma Outcast stunt truck uh, that our fine friends at Hobby Co. sent over uh, to have us check it out. So taking a look at the box here first, we've got the Outcast 6S BLX. It is a four-wheel drive brushless stunt truck. I uh, haven't had many stunt trucks myself before. Uh, pretty eager to get this one out and see what it can do. Uh, it is a ready to run, uh, completely waterproof, all metal gears, brushless, two year warranty as pointed out there on the box. Taking a look here on the side, these are some of the upgraded design features that they have done. It has the new shock cap protectors. Um, of course, Arma always has the integrated body clip retainers. It does come with their BLX 6S system, uh, the one BLX 185. It is a brushless ESC and motor combo and the ADS 15M metal gear servo. Additional features listed on the side. The only options that you will need to be complete is the four AA batteries for the remote. Obviously, you will need your own charger, lipo batteries, and the Outcast is available in two different colors the gunmetal gray, as listed here, as well as the bright orange. And let's take a look at what is inside. So these are the items that come inside, the loose items if you will. It does come with the instruction manual. It is a general ARMA instruction, instruction manual which will cover several vehicles of theirs um, as far as exploded diagrams things of that sort, tuning capabilities as well. Uh, it does come with the card here for the performance. Notice it does require at least a minimum of 5000 MAH and 35C. Uh, it is 4 or 6S capable for the ESC uh, with the maximum dimensions listed there uh, to fit within the battery tray. Okay, uh, this model do is posted at 60 mile an hour possible. Uh, there is a standard gear and you will notice that here included is an optional speed gear. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that the standard is a 14 tooth pinion and I believe this to be a 16 tooth pinion. Also in the bag, you have an Arma toolkit with two cross wrenches and several Allen keys for any adjustments that you want might want to make to the vehicle. It does come with two XT90 connectors to attach to your batteries, whether it be a one or two battery pack. And this is really nice. They've also included additional body post kit. And this is in case you want to change the body from the standard outcast body to something unique. And this is really nice that they include that. Typically it's something that you would have to purchase as an additional add-on and do the part searching to find the right posts to make a certain particular body fit. So having several different options there is quite nice uh, that they include that. And this is obviously the star of the show, the Outcast Stunt Truck. Very, very rugged, durable looking truck. Um, taking a look first here at the body, uh, it does have a nice, it, it's a, a unique body for sure. It does have the Arma badging on it. Uh, of course, their logo don't just bash, blast. 
um, kind of a retro uh, F100 series uh, retro truck with the big open wheel wells, um, but fitted very nicely how the front bumper lines up perfectly with the body. Um, they didn't go decal crazy, but uh, it does have some unique badging here on the side. Uh, of course, the windows are stickered as well, and the nice rear wing uh, seems to be fluid, nice right with the uh, trunk, with the uh, deck of the bed. Um, behind that, you do have the wheelie bar, uh, which is a nice feature for the Arma Outcast. It's got some really, really beefy, oversized tires. Um, looking at the tread pattern, um, it is almost a direct copy of the Proline Badlands, which some people say, hey, make your own tire, but I can attest that the Badlands do get fantastic traction. So there's no question that these things will grip and rip as you want them to. Uh, speaking of the tires, the wheelbase on this vehicle, you're looking at a, uh, the overall length of the arm is 21.26 inches or 540 millimeters with a wheelbase of 12.91 inches or 328 millimeters. And your width is 8.4 inches or 214 millimeters. And that gives you almost a completely square footprint on this vehicle, which is going to be the reason why stunts will not be an issue. Uh, saying that it's going to be evenly balanced, not only side to side, but front to rear as well. Uh, should be able to give you quite a few different tricks that are available for it. Actually, Arma does list on their website a list of videos that we will also be doing. Uh, to give you an idea of the stunts that this vehicle is capable of. Those would include a wheelie, a standing backflip, their big air backflip, a rolling backflip, the double backflip, it can also do a front flip, and some drifting, which is pretty cool. So we are going to be trying to do all of those with this vehicle. Going back to the body here, Arma does have its body retaining clips. Great, great idea. Uh, can't tell you how many times you can easily lose these little clips, but that's not the case if they stay right on the vehicle. One of the things that's unique to this vehicle is the roll bar. If you notice, the roll bar does have several screws in it. I think that's a great idea because when you end up on your lid, you're not going to rub down the plastic. It's actually going to just scrape along the screws and save your roll bar. Uh, the additional holes opposite the screws, um, we are going to try and use lighter flints in there. So in the event, if you notice, they do sticker it here, Hazard Sparks. And our thoughts behind that is when you put the lighter flints in there, in the event, when we inevitably do end up on the lid and doing some skidding, hopefully we can create some sparks coming from there as well pretty much sum up the body of the outcast 
Now, taking a look underneath. I will say that the body is somewhat cumbersome to get on and off due to the fact the wing is there. It does not allow you to just place it. You almost have to tuck in one corner and then the other corner before the wing gets in there. Then it will lay flat. Little cumbersome in body placement. Now underneath, very clean layout. <clears throat> it's got a nice and clean layout. Uh, you will notice these are the upgraded shock cap covers on all four corners. Uh, you do have the body posts, protectors here. All right, taking a look at the chassis. It is full aluminum chassis underneath. On the sides, you do have the side covers and mud guards up front. Very impressive. The height of these mud guards up in front to keep things from coming inside. Um, that's an awesome setup there to have that much. I mean, you've got probably four inches of protection up on the front from the mud guards easily two inches along the side supports as well taking a look here at the shock with the shock cap covers down at the bottom it does have boots over the shock shaft which is nice um, great setup there behind inside the boot they actually do use a four millimeter shaft uh, and again they are adjustable to change your spring rate obviously important on a vehicle like this um, pre pretty nice shock setup obviously once we get it out there and do some testing uh, we'll see what type of tuning is going to be needed for the shocks or if it's just ready to run as it sits <music> Going along with the suspension, uh, it does come standard with front and rear sway bars, uh, which is nice to see, having that type of, uh, again, it just being standard rather than an add-on accessory. For your steering, it does have a pivot ball steering setup with full hardened steel dog bones, front and rear um nice red aluminum anodizing on all of uh their aluminum features nice color good matching on the uh anodized colors obviously those can go one way or the other but for the suspension setup it's got aluminum up front for your front and rear shock towers are also full aluminum so one of the upgrades that they've done to the new Outcast is the battery tray. It does have the Velcro loops, but it is also adjustable as far as the height of what packs you can fit within there. They've given a lot of thought into the wire, to the wiring. If you notice in the chassis, obviously these are your battery leads. Uh, set up in series with a loop that way if you want you can run it off of a single four cell or six cell um, or taking the loop off obviously you can run two three cells or dual two cell setup uh, as far as the wiring goes for this vehicle they've done a great great job as far as hiding their own wires Motor, motor wires and cables are held into a clip here on the side from the ESC. Going down in the middle, your steering and throttle cables go right underneath the front drive shaft into their fully waterproof receiver box located right here. 
Um, again, it is a 100% completely waterproof system. They've also rubber capped your on off switch over here for added waterproof. Okay, so taking a look at the battery tray now, uh, your maximum dimensions for fitment into the battery tray is going to be length 158 millimeters, 48 millimeters wide with a 70 millimeter height. That will allow you to either put dual batteries side by side or stackable because it, it does get up quite a bit for a 70 millimeter height. Now a couple of things that they've added there is a little hoop here for securing your battery wires once connected to the ESC. Um, again just having things fit nice and tight rather than rattling all over the place. Uh, that is a nice feature to see. Another thing that they've done just on the side of the battery tray, you notice they've added just a little stub here of plastic. Uh, and that's quite good. It, it, it's simply there just to keep any wires from hitting your spur gear, which is located right behind that. And obviously chewing up your battery wires with the spur gear isn't going to do you any good. Uh, so just another nice added feature there. And going on, the Arma is the only vehicle that I've ever seen this in. And I, I like it. Um, and I, I would certainly hope that others will follow Arma's design when it comes to this. And that is simply just a little port to put your balance leads into. Uh, again, keeping all of the wiring nice and tight, Arma has left two spaces in here to simply put your battery balance leads into and a little strap over to keep them snug. Um, that, that's a fantastic option uh, that they've made standard on their vehicle. And again, I'd like to see many other RCs follow uh, because I myself have typically thrown a rubber band around it uh, just to have some security to that balance port. But up in front here, you do notice that again, uh, the standard pinion on the 2050 KV uh, BLX motor is a 12 tooth pinion for the Arma Outcast. The optional speed gear is a, is a 16 tooth speed gear. Um, when we take this out the first time though, I would probably say we're gonna run it with the standard 12 tooth because obviously smaller tooth for the pinion is gonna give us more torque. The more torque we have, the more stunts we'll be able to do. Uh, again, vehicle is not so much made for all out speed as it is for bashing and stunts. Um, again, taking a look at the stance, it is just about as wide as it is long. Uh, again, making that center of gravity perfect. It's very nimble. With the oversized tires, it being four-wheel drive, once it is up in the air, just the rotation of the tires alone is going to let this flip forward or backward with ease. Um, I think it's it's going to be a, a great vehicle to get out there and just bash around with and perform stunts, uh, which is really quite something different. Again, I've never owned a stunt truck before, but I, I've certainly been able to have other vehicles do stunts, but I, I don't know that I've had one designed to do stunts. So the Arma Outcast being a stunt truck is definitely something uh, that not many others advertise um, or, or come out with a vehicle specifically for doing stunts.
Uh, and for that reason alone, uh, we're very grateful to have uh, had this one sent to us by Hobbyco to check out. And we're going to get it out there. Um, thinking probably a little bit of a dirt track, maybe even a skate park. And see what this thing's capable of. Michelle. I knew he must have been about 17. 